in order to use this. Um, okay, so we're always thrilled to be involved in these collaborative talks. So many thanks to the Ridgewood Public Library and the Friends of the Ridgewood Library, especially Robin Ritter and Carrie Wallace. Uh, and if you don't know Age Friendly Ridgewood, please see our website, agefriendlyridgewood.org. It is my pleasure to introduce Carrie Johnson, owner of Smooth Transitions of Bergen County. Carrie is a senior and specialty moving manager located in Ridgewood. Having moved myself two years ago, I think this presentation will be absolutely invaluable. Um, I want to let you know that Carrie's presentation will be about 30 minutes and then uh, there will be time for questions to follow. So I hand it over to, to Carrie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beth. And thank you, uh, Ridgewood Public Library, for hosting us tonight. I have lived in Ridgewood myself for seven years. I'm the owner and operator of Smooth Transitions of Bergen County. I transferred here from Wisconsin, so you'll hear a little bit of a twang uh, raised in Indiana, so that Hoosier twang will come out. I work primarily with seniors, uh, the population right above my age group, um, but I work with all age groups, but I do mostly prefer working with seniors uh, because they're appreciative and um, they enjoy the help. And now for some reason, my screen is not, there we go. So tonight we're gonna to talk about the ins and the outs of right sizing or downsizing. So this can also pertain to spring cleaning. Spring cleaning is a time of rebirth and renewal. And that includes downsizing your belongings and cleaning out and preparing for the new, new season. One thing I want to talk about tonight is I never judge a book by its cover. Some of the best books I've ever read had the ugliest covers. When I work with clients, I often encounter kitchens like this. Let me tell you, that is nothing new for me to see. But most kitchens, I would say, are between that and this kitchen right here. This was a client of mine who I walked into her kitchen and it was like she was ready to put her house on the market, but that's the way she lived. Most people fall between these two kitchens. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about the art of right sizing and downsizing, taking a room by room approach. And the reason I recommend that is if you look at your entire house and you think about cleaning out every single room. It's exhausting and it's overwhelming and people get their feet stuck in concrete. It won't happen. If you take your room and divide it into sections and take one piece of furniture or one closet at a time, that is when you'll, you will find success in the decluttering and downsizing process. I want you to look at this process, keeping design in mind. If your goal is to get rid of a lot of knickknacks and get into a more minimalist look, which is in style right now, keep that in mind. But you also need to create a space for joy, keeping things that make you happy. Maybe it's your aunt's favorite desk or your mother's favorite yadro piece. Whatever it is, keep the things that make you happy. Know what you want your space to look like at the end result. and. Making a floor plan is essential, even in your existing home. Maybe you want furniture moved around to create a more open floor plan, but making a floor plan on paper is really essential to success, whether or not you're staying in your home or whether or not you're moving. If you are moving, know what furniture you're moving by possibly repurposing furniture. In another slide uh, following this, I'll talk to you about repurposing furniture. Select furniture that makes you happy. For instance, I have my grandmother's buffet. It's not the prettiest buffet, but I remember lining up on holidays to plate my food and that buffet makes me happy. So I have that in my living room. I also recommend, especially for the aging population, to select furniture that is safe. 
A glass top coffee table, while it's really pretty, is not necessarily safe as our vision fades. It's hard to see things like a glass top coffee table. Select furniture that fits your new space. Measure, measure, measure. One of the first tools I always use when working with clients is a measuring tape. It's essential to making your floor plan, measuring the length, the depth, and the height of your furniture. And again, making a floor plan is essential. Repurposing furniture, especially when I move a senior to independent living or assisted living, repurposing a favorite piece of furniture happens almost every single move. On the left slide, you can see a beautiful long buffet. This was in a client's house. This is actually her dining room. Every time I worked with her cleaning out closets, she would talk about this buffet. It was her mother's, then she bought it. She had family dinners, you know, served on this buffet. We always talked about this buffet. One day while in her basement, she was showing me a row of four tall filing cabinets and each drawer had pocket files of her tax returns. She would not part with the tax returns, but I said, hey, Sunny, if we go upstairs to that buffet, I think your, file, your files will fit inside the shelves. And do you know, if you open the left and the right doors, her files in the right-hand picture are now in that buffet. So that buffet is her filing cabinet. It holds uh, her linens in the middle and it also holds her TV. And that's her living room in her independent living apartment. It turned out beautifully, I thought. Here's an example of measure, measure, measure. This person did not measure and that poor sofa will not fit. It's so important to measure a new space. When there's so much in a room, it's really hard to see or appreciate anything. Oftentimes I will look inside a client's china hutch. Most of my clients still have a china hutch. And inside that hutch will be stacks of china. Uh, there will also be figurines, um, pictures of family members, all kinds of things shoved in it. But when you look at the hutch, it's really hard to see any one item, it's just a mess of things. So I always tell them, take stock of your favorite items. Do they have breathing room? Can you actually identify any item in that hutch without searching for it? I also recommend choosing your furniture around the size of your space, not the size of the many things that you want to keep. Sometimes a china hutch will not fit. Maybe the bottom of portion can be used as a TV stand, but you'd have to clean out that china hutch and use the bottom portion to hold a TV perhaps. So don't think about how you're keeping things. Think about how you're dispersing things and repurposing your furniture and edit your items to fit your furniture that you're keeping. <laughs> also keep things that bring you joy. This is a client's table. I thought it was a little bit on the ugly side, but it was a real conversation starter. And you know what? It starts conversations and she loves that table. And she also had it crowded when we, I first met her. It was filled with so many things you couldn't even identify the wrestler underneath. Now she's very happy with her table being kept simple like that. When it comes to floor planning, it's really essential to identify your hard surfaces where you can set things down, display family photos, display your knickknacks, your yadro, your hummels, whatever it is that you collect. And it's also essential to identify how much seating you have for company or for yourself. You wanna bring your favorite chair, but you also wanna bring a table to sit down and enjoy your morning coffee. So in this floor plan, the blue surface represent, or the blue items represent hard surfaces. There's a desk in the lower left corner in the little den, but there's also the favorite chair that my client liked to read in with a floor lamp next to it. 
And you can see the TV on the TV stand in the living room. And then you can easily identify her bed, a chair where she sits to put on her shoes and her dresser and her high boy dresser. It's essential to floor plan and make sure that what you're taking will fit in your space. Here's a floor plan that I did for a client who happened to move out of state, but we sat down without me ever walking in her new space. I had the measurements and we worked out for her exactly where everything was going. She had a little table to have her coffee, but she kept her favorite buffet, which had been in the family a long time. And I think her apartment turned out very simple, but beautiful. When, when going through the process of decluttering or downsizing, I recommend that you use painter's tape. I always give Smooth Transitions clients a roll of green painter's tape. Green equals go or keep. That means everything that you tag with the painter's tape, you're going to keep. Blue, I always use for donations or to give your kids things. So if I was going through my client's China Hutch, I would say, Betty, let's go through and tear off a piece of tape and put it on the things that you want to keep. Anything else we can either leave in place or we can mark it with blue, maybe items to give to your grandkids or your children or items to donate. When you begin the process, try to be decisive. The more decisions that you can make quickly, the faster the process will be. Act in the moment and ask for help. If you have adult children or even a grandchild that can help you, ask for their help. Because downsizing and decluttering may mean that you need to get on a step ladder to get to the top of a closet, or it may mean that you need to get down on your hands and knees under your bathroom sink, which is a bottomless pit of toiletries that have expired. So ask for assistance, know your physical limitations. Before you begin a rent room, I always set up five bins. Now I made a couple of bins today, they're smaller, but I always label my bins. I always have a trash bin, a recycle bin, a relocation bin, which is this one, and a gifting bin. Now a relocation bin, what would that mean? That means if you find something where you are working that does not belong there, for instance, you find a bracelet by your kitchen sink. Don't go move your bracelet to the jewelry box, put it in your relocation box to save time. Collect things as you go. And at the end of the day, then you can put those items away properly. I also suggest if you're using trash bags, I always, always use white bags for donations. I put clothes in them. I put donated linens, donated bath towels, washcloths. I always use a white bag. For garbage, I always use black. I learned this the hard way when I accidentally in a black bag, threw away a gentleman's summer shorts. And I had to reimburse him for his summer shorts. I was not happy. So since that costly mistake, I always use white for donations or black for trash. When you're, when you're beginning to store, sort, here are some important things to consider. When was the last time I used that item? For instance, if you're not doing yard work, there's no reason to keep your power tools any longer. And places like Habitat for Humanity will collect your power tools. Well, I need this item again. I believe 99% of the clients that I work with still have a VHS player and they have VHS tapes and no one ever watches them. They think they're going to go back and watch It's a Wonderful Life for the 30th time, and it just doesn't happen on VHS. So recycle that VHS player at the Ridgewood Recycling Center. Is this item necessary for my daily living? If you have not used your blender in a couple of years, you don't need it. 
get rid of your blender, donate it to Goodwill. Is this item safe for me to use? A six foot ladder is safe for barely anyone. I won't even get up on a six foot ladder. So donate the ladder or set it out with bulk and you'll be surprised that ladder will disappear. Does this item still fit and is it still in style? Well, I have at least three, maybe four different sizes in my closet, or I used to. I, I still have some skinny clothes, I, there's hope. However, if something has shoulder pads or you remember uh, the day that John F. Kennedy died, and believe me, I had a client that had an outfit that she was wearing when the president was killed. If you still have those clothes, chances are you will never wear them again and you will. there's no reason to keep them. They're taking up valuable storage space. Is this item functional and easy to use? I bet 90% of my viewers tonight have China and they've tried to give their China to their adult children and they've tried to give their China to their grandkids and no one wants it sadly, because it can't go in the dishwasher or they just don't entertain that way. Most uh, millennials and younger, they don't want anything that's difficult to keep like China. And does the item bring me joy? If your China brings you joy, then keep the China. But I suggest you start to use it because if it brings you joy, you'll have a joyful day every time you use your China. When you right size your china hutch, your books, or your knickknacks, keep in mind the amount of surface space and seating. If you're moving to a new dwelling, look at that floor plan again. A lot of people have hundreds, literally hundreds of framed family photos. I, it's hard to downsize your framed family photos. Take the photos out of the frame and donate the frames and consolidate those photos in a box. Select your favorite tchotchkes and consider alternating displays, maybe making things seasonal. You have a spring display and a fall display, something like that, so that you can rotate your knickknacks. Remind yourself if you're moving, where are you going to store your books? If you don't have a bookshelf, it's going to be hard to store your books. So I recommend donating books to um, the recycling center in Ridgewood now takes books and they sell those and the money I believe goes to the township. Um, but there are places that will take books. Consider the bare walls in your new space. Review the floor plan, look and see where the windows are. Maybe you want to alternate your current art on your wall now. Maybe you have too much or too little. Moving things around makes your home kind of feel like, like new. And then a little bit, we're going to talk about the dining room table test as using the size of your dining room table as a guide for your knickknacks. This was one client's book pile after we unpacked her and she had no bookshelves. I did not pack her, I would have warned her. We had no bookshelves to put those books and we ended up finding a place, a home for those. She had nowhere to put them. And here's another client who we did not pack, but she had this much remaining art after she moved because she didn't calculate her wall space. So we had to pile it in, in backs, uh, baskets and boxes for her. The dining room table test is a great test if you are downsizing your household. It's the perfect test for a two bedroom apartment. You select your favorite knickknacks from around the house and you set them on the table, keeping the table without the leaves. If you add the leaves, you're cheating. Your framed photos from the around the house should also go on your table. Once your table is filled with framed photos, knickknacks, and other household accessories, that is really all of the space you most likely will have in your new apartment or in your new home if it's a two bedroom home. I wanna talk about decluttering room by room, which I mentioned at the very beginning. Start small and easy. 
The easiest thing that I suggest for clients to clean out on their own is their linen closet. Most people have shoved into their closet linens that they haven't seen since the 1970s. Most people use just the front washcloth and towels and sheets in the very front of their closet. Take out one shelf at a time. If they smell funny, you know, have um, your natural family smell, everyone has a family smell. If they kind of smell interesting or if the towels don't match and they're ragged, put them in, put the towels in a donation bag that's white and donate them to a local humane society. There's one in Oakland and there's one in Teterboro. They love used towels and washcloths for the, the animals that they've taken in. If it's old linens, I would really hesitate to donate some of those unless they're really nice. I would suggest throwing them away or again, taking them to the Ridgewood Recycling Center there's a fabric de uh, depository that you can put things like that in. And I believe that they're shredded. But cleaning out your linen closet is a self-empowering self empowering thing. And I say that because it doesn't take very long. I recommend working one at most two hours a day. If you say, I'm going to clean out the linen closet and my bathroom and the kitchen, it's not going to happen. So limit how much time you devote. An hour a day, maybe four to five days a week. It's amazing what you can accomplish in that hour if you stay focused on one small thing. In your bathrooms, toiletries are the bane of American existence, I think. We all have shampoos and lotions and potions and makeup that we have not touched in years. Unless they're unopened, please throw them away. Use a black trash bag and throw them away. And with medicine, I don't recommend throwing it away, but if you empty it into a clear Ziploc bag, you can deposit it at Walgreens up in Wyckoff or CVS up in Wyckoff, I can't remember, I think it's CVS. But take your old medicines and throw, take them out of the dispenser, put them in a Ziploc and take them to a, a medicine depository. Going to the living room, the living room is actually an easy place to declutter. Your knickknacks should fit on your dining room table. You can sort your electronics. If you have an old TV stand, Unplug, maybe spend an hour taking away the old electronics that you don't any longer use. Ask your son or your brother-in-law if they can get out the old stuff. They're probably pretty technically savvy. And empty the drawers of your end tables. We collect playing cards with partially filled decks, old ashtrays that haven't been used in years. Throw things away that aren't usable today. And in your dining room, again, the china hutch items should fit on your dining room table. Linens may no longer be needed. Ask your daughter, your daughter-in-law, your son, your grandchildren, if they want the table linens, chances are you can donate those. And tag items again with painter's tape. You're keeping or you're disposing. Keeping if you're moving or disposing or donating. This is actually a picture of my nightstand a few years ago. Nightstands in a bedroom kind of take a little bit of time to clean out. You can see I haven't used that abs diet book. Sadly, I think it's still there. But nightstands are one of those depositories. You throw things in and then you never see them again. If you spend an hour just cleaning out your nightstand, you'll empty at least two of your four drawers. It's amazing what we collect uh, in our stands. Under your bed, uh, there's kind of a funny story. I had a woman who never told me she stored things under her bed. She lived in a high rise in Hackensack. And on moving day, the movers picked up her bed frame to take it to the truck. And there were four boxes 
of uh, clear plastic bins. We opened them and she had at least 200 bras stored under her bed. Well, we laughed hysterically because no one needs that many bras and she had changed her sizes that many times. It was kind of funny, but clean out from under your bed and tell anyone who's helping you to reach under there and help you. The closet is also such a difficult thing that it's kind of nice to work in tandem with someone who will give you an honest opinion if something is attractive, if it's not attractive, if it doesn't look right on you, if it doesn't fit, you know that. And most of the time, a woman's closet in particular, the middle section of the closet holds about 20% of your clothing. And the far ends hold the rest, the other uh, 80%. There's an 80-20 rule. We wear 20% of our clothing, 80% of the time. That's a known fact. And I always know what my clients wear, it's dead center in their closet. And I also know what shoes they wear. They're the shoes at the entry of their closet. Go through your jewelry and accessories. Ask your grandkids if maybe they're interested in having those items. I'm not going to go every room by room and talking about decluttering. But cookbooks, maybe you want to tear out your favorite recipe or take a picture of your favorite recipe, but you don't need 50 cookbooks and keeping each book for one recipe is a little silly. Ask your family if they want your cookbooks or small appliances that you don't use any longer. Um, go through your spices. Spend an hour going through your spices. Chances are 80% of them have expired. If they're older than two years, they're considered expired. Go through your unwanted food and donate that to our local food bank. They're collecting food at the Masonic Hall um, on Maple. So drop off bags of food. I do that routinely, at least once a week. I take clients' unwanted food over to uh, the Masonic. Extra dishes, glassware, mugs, china, those pieces you can go through. Everyone has their favorite coffee mug. No one needs 50 coffee mugs, and we all have a lot of coffee mugs. As far as your office, you can purge paper, eliminate your big filing cabinets, sort your power cords, maybe have someone with a better vision sit with you at your dining table and go through your papers, and clean out your desks. You might have a lot of office supplies that maybe some local school could use. This is just a, a grid that I found online about spices. And it's interesting to note that the longest spice you should keep is actually two years. And I know I have had used spices that were at least a dozen years old. Most times in the basement, Everything you have can be donated, sold, given away, or trashed. Have your family come and go through the holiday decorations with you. Uh, get rid of old broken furniture. If you put that out with bulk, you'll be surprised. People will come and pick it up. If there are family heirlooms, gift them to your children. The same thing with your attic and your garage. In your garage, there's a lot of hazardous waste. And there's hazardous waste collection now once a month uh, through October, I believe, um, at different locations in the area. Collect your hazardous waste in boxes and run it to um, where they are picking it up. This was a client's garage. She had not done yard work in 20 years, yet she had all of these implements. And we set them out on her front lawn and most of them disappeared. This is what you don't want to happen. You don't want a storage locker full of things that your adult children will have to sort through later. Now, as you've been cleaning out each room using the bin system, at the end of every hour or two hour work session that you have, Put things away properly, take the garbage out to the garbage cans, 
go around the house with your relocation box and put things neatly away. One thing that I want to talk about is establishing a time frame with your family and friends to pick up what you're gifting to them. I've had clients whose adult children stop by the house on moving day to pick up their high school yearbooks. That is so annoying and so not fair to my clients because their parents have held on to these things for 30, 40, sometimes 50 years and their kids show up on moving day to pick them up. Give everyone a time frame. Say, hey, I want everything out of my house that you want by the 4th of July when we come to watch the parade. If you could, everyone come in and pick up those items you want out of the house, that would ease my burden. Put it on them, not on you. As you declutter and right size, you will find it easier to stay organized because half the challenge of staying organized is not having room for everything. And by deleting and editing out what you have and what you're keeping, you'll be able to find a place for everything and everything will be in its place. And I think the better organized that you are and clutter free, um, it's a practice that you can keep up routinely. Probably my favorite tips are if you're getting ready to move, or if you have a deadline in your head that you want to have your cleanup done by the 4th of July, start early. Uh, get generous. Take pictures of things to show your kids next time you see them. Ask them if they want certain things. Save your memories, though. If you have um, a diary or love letters from your husband, those are okay to keep. Um, but plan your space ahead of time. Plan where you're going to keep that memorabilia. Take control of your situation. Have your kids pick things up when they say they're going to pick up. And if you're sorting for a move, don't pack as you go because you'll forget what you've packed. Sometimes I have to work with a client two and three times in the same closet to get it down to what that client is actually going to move because the first go through is difficult to part with things, but the second and third time, they're like, okay, take it, I don't need it. Work in small chunks of time. Don't work to exhaustion. Give yourself an hour at a time and develop a realistic plan. Don't say, I'm doing the house this week. Maybe say, I'm doing my dresser and my high boy dresser this week. That's a more realistic vision. Or this week, I'm tackling my linen closet and my medicine cabinet. That's much more realistically realistic. Think strategically and, of course, ask for assistance. Ask for help if you can't reach items. Please don't climb if you're unsteady and don't get down on your knees if you're not able to get up again. I always thought this was kind of funny. A house is a big responsibility. Roofs to repair, gutters to clean, doors to paint, lawns to mow. Honestly, I don't know where Agnes gets the energy. <laughs> if you want to meet with someone like myself, and I'm a member, by the way, of the National Association of Senior and Specialty Move Managers. The website is NASM, N -A -S -S mm.org. Uh, we have quite a few move managers in Bergen County. I believe I'm the only one that lives in Ridgewood. Um, but ask for help. I always offer a complimentary consultation. I always leave behind painter's tape. If they don't need my help, I'm glad to give it away. Um, identify if you're moving, if you're downsizing. Identify what you want to move, donate, gift to family or friends, or sell. Sometimes people have so many things in their house, it's better um, to set things aside to sell. But starting the process now before your move or before your, your, your self-imposed uh, deadline, start now. So this just talks about if you're, if you're moving, um, I'm a move manager, I pack for my clients and I unpack for my clients. 
uh, we hire movers to move our clients from one home to another. But like I said, I offer a complimentary consultation and uh, would be happy to talk you through the process. And again, my name is Carrie Johnson. I partner with Steve Insler, uh, and the, this is how you can reach me. I really appreciate your time tonight. and Thank you for listening. And call me, please, if you have any questions. Uh, if it, thank you, Carrie. Um, if anyone would like to, uh, has any questions for Carrie, you can type them in the chat and we'll read them to her. Um, a comment came up while you were talking, Carrie, um, uh, from someone saying that they have not forgiven their daughters for donating her 1970s bell bottoms in the 90s. And, you know, that's kind of interesting because I think, um, sometimes we hold on to things because we think that trend is going to come back you know mid-century modern <laughs> did come back but you know what what's your suggestion about you know those things maybe that trend will come back or even just that memory of that style wanting to keep it it's funny because i have some wide bottomed pants when they were really popular i don't know 10 years ago well styles come back around but they're ever so revised. My wide bottomed pants were low cut. Remember about eight years ago, everyone was wearing low cut pants. I, it was horrible looking on me, even though they fit, I donated them because there's always a revision in the style. Now it's a little bit sad that those things were donated because I do have a resource in Dumont that buys vintage mid-century modern vintage clothing, mostly from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So these two gentlemen own the business in Dumont, and sometimes you can sell things to them for, you won't make a lot of money, but you know, it's, it's a way to make a little bit of money. They're also, they always look for mid-century modern furniture also. But as far as those bell bottoms are concerned, the next time your child wants to take something like that, ask if they would take a picture for you. I take pictures of a lot of things for my clients so they won't forget what things look like. And I usually put them in, a, a, you know, get them to the pictures developed at Walgreens and put them in a little photo album. But I don't think my clients ever look at those photos again. But it's just a little reminder. Um, so another question uh, coming in is, how does one go about getting a reputable, reputable appraiser for antiques um, that the next generation is not interested in? Yes, antiques, that, that is a tough one um, because they're really not in style right now. My great fear or prediction, I, I hate that it's a prediction, is that all of these beautiful ornate pieces of furniture are going to end up in a landfill or chopped up for firewood and then they're going to come back into style. Now I have googled and spent a lot of time reaching out to antique appraisers. There are several I believe in Midland Park. Um, you can always call me and I can give you the names of people that will buy things from you but you're not going to be making a lot of money on antiques right now unless they're super high end. So if you have an antique dining room set, for instance, and you spent $8,000 on it back in 1940 something or 50 something, I always tell my clients, expect very little if you are to sell it and be happy that someone's getting enjoyment out of it. But if you spread the cost of that dining table and set over the course of time, it may have cost you a hundred bucks a year. So be happy with that, that you were able to enjoy it and hopefully it will have a, a life elsewhere. But high-end antiques, I think would have some value, but average antiques, probably not so much right now, but I can give you a list of people to call. Great. And, you know, we, we did have a question come in asking if you could offer a list of places that will take the items. And, you know, we did have a lot of people come in a little late to the program. Okay. And this is recorded, so we'll be sending out the link so you could rewatch it with all the resources you shared. 
but um, would you be able to offer a list of some of the places where you, you know, donate the places that you mentioned? Absolutely, absolutely. If you email me at this address below, if you have access to email and ask me for a resource list, I will send you a list of resources. I would be happy to. That includes charities that pick up like Habitat for Humanity, uh, they are in Westwood, they cover Bergen County, and they will pick up donated items from your home, uh, furniture, I should say, as long as they are in good condition, because they have to resell those items in order to benefit Habitat for Humanity. Um, Salvation Army will pick up as well, but I'd be happy to share that list. Thank you. Um a really good question came in for maybe those that want to help their parents or grandparents. Um, someone's mother is in a temporary uh, assisted living situation. And is it better for her to clean up while the mom isn't there? And she's worried about the anxiety. And I think that kind of comes up on like hoarders too, where people are like, that's it. I'm just going to throw everything out for you. And it can actually cause a lot of stress for the person. Yeah. So what's your opinion about that? I, I always side with the client, the client being um, her mom. I would hate for mom to come home and have everything gone. I have seen families torn apart by this uh, because you're stepping in her territory. You, you are mothering your mother and they don't like that and they don't like to be told what to do and I don't blame them. Um, I would be very careful about that. Uh, maybe have a frank conversation and have someone like me or a peer of mine, you know, an organizer come in and speak to her and give her proof that it can be done. And if she's moving to assisted living, she can take her favorite things. Um, but I wouldn't do too much without her there and certainly not in a hoarding situation. Uh, that can cause such great stress and, and anxiety it really could damage a person psychologically. Thank you. I, don't, I do not specialize in hoarders though. I just wanna be clear about that. Light hoarding I have dealt with. Um, I work in a hoarding situation if that person is never returning to the home because I don't wanna damage, uh, I don't wanna injure them psychologically. Yeah, and the, the person that made the comment, they didn't specify that that was the situation. Right, it's just, right. I know I watch that. Whenever I feel like I need to clean, if I watch an episode of that, it's sort of a little bit of inspiration. Yeah. You know, um, I would you, suggest yeah. to that daughter that maybe she says, hey, mom, would you mind if I cleaned out your bathrooms? Or, hey, mom, would you mind if I cleaned out your linen closet? Those are two places that don't really have memories attached to them, Right linens, not so much, toiletries, not so much. Maybe that would give her a jump start, or, they, or you know, old food, but start where memories would not necessarily exist. Um, uh, hold on one second. Um, Oh, and I apologize. Uh, she said that she did not want to throw anything out. I apologize. I misread it. She just wanted to sort, not. Oh. So I apologize. Oh. I misread. Sorting. She just wanted hey, to sort sorting. while she's at home. Yeah, um, I think sorting, I don't think that would be so bad. I really don't. Maybe it would give her mom a vision of, you know, oh, look, here's something I haven't seen in a long time. That, that I think is okay. But throwing things away, or you know, gifting things without permission is not necessarily good. And I and again, I apologize for the person that I That's missed okay. that. But again, I think in addition, I mean, it's I think sorting is very helpful. But I think mm -hmm. sometimes it, we kind of answered two questions there. Again, yeah. I apologize to that person. Um, we had someone that asked kind of a specific question. Um, uh, oh, now I lost it in the chat. Sorry. Um, someone inherited their mom's cedar chest and it has lots of reels of beautiful suit fabrics in them. Any idea who could use that? Oh, suit fabrics? No. I, oh, that's a new one. I have not heard that. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, 
I would Google that. I would Google that extra suit fat. It's amazing what you can find when you Google it. For instance, wedding dresses. Um, a lot of people have grandmas, moms, your own wedding dress. There's um, a place that takes wedding dresses and makes baby gowns for uh, children that need to be buried. So it's like a, a little a burial gown out of beautiful old satin. I mean, I, I can't imagine a nicer thing for a grieving parent. But um, I've actually mailed uh, wedding dresses to that. Uh, I think it's called something angels. I can't remember, but it's a nice outfit. Nice, nice thing to do. Uh, someone suggested a quilting store, maybe. Oh, yes, yes. Um, let me just see, Keith. There's a lot of question. I'm losing my place. Uh, let's see. A few people made some suggestions. Uh, uh, the veterans and lupus organizations pick up in Ridgewood, mm -hmm. not large appliances. Mm -hmm. um, the Habitat Restore may pick up large appliances. I know you, you work with them a, a lot. I'm not uh, sure if they do. The, I would call ahead to the Restore or actually go on their website, which is bergenrestore.org, bergenrestore.org, and it will show you what they take and what they will not take. For instance, they do not take sofa sleepers, any sleeping sofa, because mattresses cannot be donated, even if it's a day old. A mattress cannot be donated. I think it's unlawful. So um, those need to go to the curb for bulk pickup. Uh, but the ReStore may take newer appliances and power tools and things like that. Uh, newer washers, newer dryers. I think there may be an age limit to those. Okay, great. Um, I'm still, uh, you know, in the chat, if you're reading the chat, people are making other suggestions too for that fabric question. Um, I can't see the chat, so. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, just if other people are following wrong. And, and again, we're going to send out a list of all the resources that were mentioned today. Um, uh, if, does anyone have any more questions for Carrie? We're happy to answer them, I think. I know yeah. I kind of gave you a general picture. I think my biggest recommendation is work in room by room, small increments of time, and small spaces first. And you know, you don't want to get over stressed and overzealous and then lose your enthusiasm for the process. So the small amount of time in a small space, people usually it gears them up for the bigger, the bigger areas. Uh, um, uh, all right, I think that, um, I think that's kind of most of the questions that we got. And I think one of the things, especially one of the things that I struggle with, you know, because, and, you know, during the week I am working, and I think one of the things that's really helpful is I try to do all my sorting and decluttering on the days when I have off. And to do all of that in one day is, it's impossible. And mm -hmm. I think trying to, like you said, do a little bit at a time is helpful. Mm -hmm. And cleaning up at the end of every work session is really important too. take the garbage out to the garbage can, put things back where, you know, from your relocation box, put things back where they belong, take your donations to your trunk. And then the next time you're out and about and you're driving by Goodwill, which by the way, I really miss some Paramus, um, but next time you're driving by Goodwill or I think there's a thrift store also in the Midland Park Shopping Center, you know, have that in your trunk and out of your house. Once things are out the door, you'll feel better. All right. Uh, well, well, thank you, Carrie. Beth, any, uh, Beth Abbott, I, I don't know if you wanna, send us off or any comments from Age Friendly and Robin, I will mute myself. I thought the presentation was terrific. And Carrie, thank you so much for Thanks, your Beth. generosity, uh, all the information you shared. Thank you, thank you. Again, thank you so much. We really appreciate it.
Thanks, Robin.